the filtered sass that you can use once you've got sass on the I think it's called Susie. And uh, I'm really sorry about the alliteration. It's like tabloid, you just want something to get a pen uh, I'll not be talking about the alliteration. It's a really nice little tool. Um, first, I'm uh, Martin, Martin Underhill. I, I, I run Temper Temper, a web shop, a web design shop. Um, and uh, I'm one of the organizers as well, alongside uh, Kylie and Richard and Sam, the fund in North East. So, uh, hopefully. Uh, so, first thing, I'll well, just get your order. So, the first thing is an ordered list of contents, and I thought I'd just do that because it's semantics and stuff and front end development and all that kind of stuff. So, there's a bit of crap and joke for you. Uh, I'll tell you about why uh, Susie's great. I'll tell you about and why it's better than some other solutions and what the other solutions are as well, because there are some. Um, how to install it briefly, um, how to use it sort of for the most sort of common usages. Um, I'll mention advanced usage, but I'm not going to go too far into that because we could be here all night uh, and it could get quite tedious because all of these are quite edge cases. Um, and uh, I'll also mention why I like it in terms of it being a one, one to do one thing well, you know, it's not a jack of all trades type thing. So the first, uh, the first thing is the, the is to do with the semantic, um, the semantic issues as to why I like it. I've got I've got problems with with uh, bootstrap and foundation. Um, great for prototyping, throwing something up very quickly. Uh, and I should mention as well, I didn't mention it, it's a layout tool, so this is, I'm going to focus right on, on laying out your, your website, so different columns and all that kind of thing. So you can drop um, classes on your HTML in Bootstrap, same thing in Foundation, although I think Foundation have introduced a new way of doing it which might be a little bit more flexible, a little bit more like Susie, so don't quote me on any of this. It's, uh, but I've been using Susie pretty much exclusively for, for, uh, for a good while now, so I'm a little bit out of touch with this one here. Um, I find a lot of these other solutions don't have the flexibility that you can get with Susie. Um, things like, well, I'll go over it in a bit, but things like asymmetric prints and stuff. If you've got, if you've got really kind of funky designers that wanted to do this, or if you are wanted to create a design, <coughs> it's kind of impossible. And so Susie makes all that quite easy as well. Um, I, I don't. I'm not a big fan of dependencies. Um, I quite like Rob's approach before in terms of just sort of using one little, one little tool in the command line to run as SaaS and things. Just keep it simple, not to have things built on top of things. That's um, the logos for uh, Compass and, and all of that next one's for Bourbon. It's both, both good tools, but, but again, I, I, I prefer to run as lightly as possible, especially with larger projects when you're sort of compiling your, your SaaS into CSS. I had one that was taking almost 20 seconds, which was Costing client money as I was sitting, you know, pressing save, flicking to the browser, and sort of tapping my foot <laughs> while, it was, uh, while it was compiling. Um, I, I tried to my own at one point, which was, a, which was a great idea, but a terrible idea after about, about, about a couple of hours of tearing the tape off. I think it was the jack of all trades thing as well. That there's a lot of these that do a lot of other stuff. That foundation of Bootstrap uh, are, well, Bootstrap especially is, is about everything. You know, you can drop in buttons and you can do anything you want, you can do with this app. But Susie just did this one thing. Um, so, diving a little bit into the semantics, this is something that I cribbed off Bootstrap's um, site, I think, of their, one of their little um, demos. Uh, so that's kind of what you end up with all these classes so, so the same at small widths use five columns for this first div second div use another five columns and the second the next offset it by two columns as well so you're shuffling it over a little bit all of it's in the html which i'm, I'm a little bit of a i'm a bit you know that kind of thing i, I, I don't really like any extra clutter in html so susie allows me to, to sort of abstract that one and keep it all in the SAS, which is where I think that sort of stuff should live, which is styling. So 
So HTML is your, is your structure and your uh, and your meaning for your for your document, and then all the rest is all changeable, all changeable. But the but the chain separating those two things is important uh, for maintaining the multi point view. So that's that's the and this is what you can just do. I don't know. You can have a little semantic markup with, with main, class main. You can have role main. You can, you can have an aside there. You can have role complementary. You can target anything in those, depending on how specific you need to be. But at its at its most basic, you can do you can target this in the same way. You can do all of that with Susie just by targeting these elements, uh, which makes me. The flexibility thing I mentioned before about grids and different kind of layouts and things. If you, I don't know if you're just like, if you, if you do this one, you do as well as a design, or you have designers come to you with these, with these designs. Maybe they're a bit creative and they want to have things that are not quite kind of, you know, like eight columns and four columns and maybe a 12 column grid or something. Um, so the irregular stuff, or maybe they want to change, drop and change if it's green widths. Um, so you have like five columns and three small, ten medium, eighteen when it's big. Who knows? That, that, that kind of thing can happen. And Susie tackled that quite nicely. Uh, asymmetric grid as well. Um, the dependencies thing. Just to uh, yeah, slow the compilation of your CSS and increase the complexity of the project in, in general. So if you keep that, if you keep that nice and uh, light, and you're you're onto a winner as well. It might be that you're running compass anyway, but you know, if you can avoid running, you can run compass somewhere and run that somewhere, and run your slash somewhere else, I think you can split them somewhere. I think it just gets complicated, so I don't know what we're that. I mentioned the maths, I did try, I sat and I tried to write it all on my own, and I thought I'd, I thought I'd done it. I was really quite happy about it all, uh, and then I quickly uh, kind of was just tears because there was just too many different scenarios you had to cater for in maths. I, I'm not a mathematician. I, I, I write HTML and CSS. So, yeah, that's kind of how I felt about it. I was just a, that's a brink of tears. And then I found Susie, which was, which was a bit tiny. Uh, and the master, one thing, um, you just, again, we just need to keep the code base light, keep things nice and modular. So, if Susie's doing one thing, you might have something else doing something else somewhere else. It just means that. The, the whole thing is dedicated and does pretty much. I mean, I've never encountered anything with layout that I couldn't do with Susie, so it was uh, it was a nice a nice discovery. So that's why Susie's good uh, and possibly better than anything else out there. Certainly in my experience, I'd be happy to know if there was anything else. But just to sort of dive into Susie a little bit more, um, as far as. Installing it, all this kind of stuff could be a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're if you're in the kind of uh, moving to SCSS in the first place thing. But if I go through this, you'll be able to see a little bit, even if it doesn't kind of all kind of make all that much sense without kind of sitting for a few hours and working through the documentation and things. Hopefully, it'll give you an idea of what's possible once you've got to grips with with uh, with SAS. You'll be able to say, okay, right, well, this is cool. This is another good reason to learn SAS, even if I'm moving ahead or. Um, Hopefully it doesn't make a little bit of sense. So you can do your install with Bower, uh, the package manager for your, for your front end gets involved. You just copy the zip, the zip file off their, their website. And you can use a Ruby gem, I think. It's just, I think, again, just like we mentioned before, just gem install with Suzy. I think it gets you, gets you Suzy running on your, on your machine. Assuming you're running a Mac, because other Macs can with Ruby installed, but uh, yeah, Windows wise. I couldn't tell you, but I'm sure there's, there's something in the box that's how to do that. Um, you can get a, a, a GUI, which a lot of people like to do, certainly at the start, because the command line can be quite a scary place. So um, use use something like Code Kit, I think, which has Suzy built in. Prepros, I think, also has Suzy built in. Code Kit definitely does. Um, again, I think Prepros is the only one that's available on Windows, but I think it does just have it as well. So there's a few different ways to get it up and running. As far as compiling it, you can use Compass, you can use just SAS, or you can use LibSAS, which I love. Um, there are some little teething problems, LibSAS isn't quite there with some things just yet. You mentioned that before. 
terms of debugging and things, like the, 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 the debugging and the libs that I'm having to order with uh, in some on some occasions. So I've rolled back on two projects back to Ruby, but it's all it's all it's all good and it all works. So you've got the flexibility of using those if you're using the command line. Um, to give you an idea of, of how to get your get going with Suzy, first what you do is you just declare a little map, a uh, little variable there for your map, tell it how many columns you want to have, tell it how big you want your gutters to be, that's 25% uh, of, uh, well, it can be one end, it can be whatever you want it to be, and the math is another thing which tells it how you want to behave, sometimes you can make it more like that, different jumps from one to, jumps from one to the next, it really just means it stretches, just like when you do uh, website too. Um, so actually laying it out, first thing you do is you declare your container. So you say I want my container to be 60 inches wide, or you pixels, you want know, there. A bit of padding either side, so once it crunches down to small screen size, the, the content's not touching the edge. And then to get it working, all you all you do once you've got it all installed, you, it's just little mix ins basically, so it includes a span of two or four columns, and then so that means your logo is going to be two columns on the left, and your navigation is going to be two columns on the right. Is the columns thing like that, that makes sense? So the logo is more or less what the column, how the columns thing works in terms of design. Um, so that means that the logo <coughs> will be on the left, navigation will be right, each takes a half an inch. That's it. Um, you can uh, you can override things. So say you um, so you want your you want to do, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this, but this is the first example that's come to mind. So you've got a, a list element globally. You're saying every list element should be um, four columns, fourteen, with a bit of padding left and right. Uh, and then if you say a list inside an article, I want it to be different. So I don't want it to. I don't want it to have any layout at all, so you just all you do is you tell it, don't do it anymore, have a normal width, and whatever width that you can have naturally, and take the margin off the right, I'm assuming you can use the right for that. But, um, but yeah, so you just override it just by doing that. You can even make this into a little mix in yourself, so you can deploy that once and say include uh, Susie override or layout override or something, and then we'll just drop all those bits in there if you want. When it comes to responsive design, uh, you're probably going to want different layouts and different screen sizes. Um, you don't want that many columns on a, on, a, on a 320 pixel wide screen, I guess, so 12 columns is a complete waste of time down there, plus your gutter are going to be just minuscule. So to make it a little bit more usable, have four columns in, in, in mobile. Default is going with the mobile first idea as well, um, so you're starting with four columns. When you get to your medium screen size, pop it up to six columns, so you've got a little bit more flexibility with the layout. And uh, when you get to larger screens, uh, you know, 12 columns, do what you can with those. Um, the gutter of position after is what I was kind of alluding to before, that you, you, can, you can tell it where you want your gutter to be. So between every column you've got a gutter. You can say you want your gutter to be on the left, you can say you want it to be a little bit either side, or you can put it on the right. It just depends on your personal preference. Susie 1 used to just have one gutter position which was on the right, which is why I kind of just ran with that. Now that Susie 2 has come out, just makes it just makes it sort of simpler in my head. But you can, there's a lot of flexibility with that. And I'll, and I'll mention a, an example um, in a sec. Um, breakpoints themselves, Susie can deal with them. Uh, there's a Susie breakpoint thing. Um, <coughs> You can handwrite them, just you know, the normal media queries with your with your um, screen widths in there, uh, or you can use a tool called Breakpoint, which is well worth a look at. Um, Breakpoint at the moment, it used to be that it only ran with Compass. It now runs with Ruby SAS, but it doesn't run with LibSAS yet. It's not compatible. <coughs> LibSAS isn't quite up to speed to run Breakpoint yet. So if you if you need super fast comp compiling, Breakpoint probably won't be a, won't be an option. But it's worth exploring. Um, so, what's this? This is uh, yeah. This is multiple things, multiple examples. I've just used the most basic handwritten 
and want to have them made them into Susie breakpoints or great points. Great points. Right. So they're just medium breathing with nested, um, nested spans, so you can shoot six, four of six. Starts off two of four, two of four, and then going up to two of six, then four of six. Um, at medium speed, uh, at sort of medium speed widths, or 30 m's anyway, um, wherever that might lie. The, the layout part tells you what what map to use. Remember, that you declared, you declared those maps on that last page where you said uh, default, medium, and large. This just says make sure you use the medium one and use four of six, because if you don't declare that, it will just use the default, which four of six would end up pushing its way off the screen. It would, but it wouldn't be right on either of So uh, just be careful to always declare your, uh, your context before you, before you use your spans and things if you're using the different um, shorthand's a thing, uh, where I mentioned before about the, about the gutters being after, one example that I often use um, where, it would, where it's nice to have the gutter before the, the image is where you've got an article. So you've got eight of your twelve uh, columns there uh, as the article, you might have a little sidebar there or something, and you've got an image, and you want your image to be half the width of this eight column, the article column. You want it to be floated to the right so the text wraps around it there. The problem is your your gutter is going to be on the right hand side, so the text is going to touch the edge of the image, but you want the gutter to separate the text from the image a little bit. So all you have to do is use a little sh a shorthand. This this is there's loads of things to do with shorthand, but this is a really obvious one. So you're saying instead of um, spanning um, the last four of eight and having the, the gutter afterwards, you just say before. And that can go anywhere, you can go before or last four of eight. You, you, it's clever enough to pick up the right bit from your, from your shorthand. So that's, that's really quite a powerful thing. Always remember though to um, declare your, your normal context after that because otherwise, because CSS, the way CSS works, everything after that declaration of, of before is then going to have the gut of before. So the next time you declare any spans to, to, to um, to, to clear the layout, make sure you, you use that, uh, that, that you know. So you go layout back to medium, which will then flip back to this, which says got to position afterwards. So just to save any, any headaches there. Another really, really useful thing that I, I can't believe I didn't tinker with until not only a, a couple of weeks ago is the gallery function. What that does is it puts all the end of type in there because obviously if you've got galleries, so you've got four, you've got twelve columns, and you want you want each of your gallery items to span four of the twelve columns, so you're going to have three three items compressed. That last one, uh, you need to take the margin off the right of it and have it as a last of. You would have span last of last four of twelve, so you would end up going end of type three n, and then you do another one for the clear, so. If, the end plus four or something, it just gets really messy and complicated. But this, you just do that, it does everything for you, it just spits out everything in that, in that particular um, grid layout for you. So you just have to say gallery for it to go, and everything just lays out nicely in three columns. Um, there's tons more you can do. I mentioned asymmetric grids, I'm not going to go into them because that's, that's an edge case. Um, you can do things with margin padding, so you don't, an element doesn't have to just have. Uh, a space in the grid for itself. You can give it a little bit of space before the element starts. You can use, uh, so that's like pre and post, you can squish, which, which moves everything in. You can pull things, which is like negative margin. You can bleed things, so it's negative margin and the padding of the same amount. So it, it gets really complicated, really in depth, but it's really powerful. Like uh, there are some really cool things you can do with it, most of which you probably won't use. Um, but hopefully some of those examples will if you grab them off slide share, you'll be able to um, tinker with them. There's plenty in the box anyway. Um, another thing you can do is use, using uh, spans and gutters as a function as a, rather than mix in, so you can just add it to a width rather than including it as a mix in. That's probably a lot more than anyone will ever use it for, but that does have its uses. Um, and that's where to, to, to find all the, the toolkits. Um, so head to it's uh, oddverb.net. Susie.org.net and go there and you can have a little, uh, have a little play. So, um, 
They keep the markup nice and clean, nice and flexible, very lightweight, very straightforward syntax, span 4 to 12, and nothing, nothing, uh, nothing to worry about there. And it does one thing well, and that's sort of why I like Susie and why I use it all the time. So, does anybody have any questions? All that was on the SAS part? That was all inside. This all is all your maps and stuff are all on the SAS part. <coughs> uh, you, would, you would probably use an partial. Yeah. So uh, I usually have a map in maps.css or maps.scss file to put all my maps in there and then reference that in the uh, layout folder and the directory. So, so uh, yeah. I explain what a breakpoint is in the time. Do I know a breakpoint from type to another? Code right? Oh, it okay. means something entirely different from this one. Just uh, when it gets to with, with the screen sizes, so um, if you've got uh, right, a small to uh, medium, medium. Yeah, so at the, at the point that it breaks from being small <laughs> to medium, okay. Then you know, you, you, you have to back up the three points, but just really solid. But there will be the other, uh, yeah, the other, yeah, so, but, yeah, so just basically at the point at which the, this was yeah. Most people think of one size in that in that context. Do you do you find you have to do that? Is more people think like the source match for this that the other search? It's generally just for it's the same. Yeah, it, it works. It works. <coughs> Again, it won't compile if you made a uh, silly error or something, and Mister Send it to the wrong one or something. It's, it's it's pretty good to tell you. I just mean like if it's not doing what you expect. So. Do you, do you spend time working out what? Uh, yeah. It's just kind of, it's very good. You get, yeah, you get used to it. It's very, it's very good though, but it's just the same as just the button that's asked generally. You can put, um, quite a nice feature of this one, put a background gradient, and then, yeah, it's just like a faded grid. So you can, you can code that in. There's a whole debugging section to use as well. Um, do you have an example of the compiled CSS? Is that as blowy as it's trying No, it's as blowy as you can make it, really. It's, 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 uh, um, it's the same as any SAS. If, if, um, all the games are put in, if I remember, I overwrite the uh, the um, uh, that one there. Basically, all, all the standard does is says flow left width. Whatever it can be for the width to be is 4 to uh, 14, 14. And then it'll put margin right, which, in, which uses the, the gutter, um, as you sort of mentioned earlier. So you're only really like to do things with that. So it's, um, it's pretty efficient. It's, uh, I've never had any problems with that. Yeah, it was nice and tight. Especially if you're, you're compressing CSS and you um, use it for the margin. So if I have four or four uh, four and four or four inside that, and it would be four or four teams, it would be, yeah. It would be that way, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's where you're going to Yeah, so that's where, uh, so that's where you declare your, your, your you need to, you need to declare your, your uh, context. So, so the context is fixed by the end. It can be. Um, well, I, on, on my map there, I made a grid account, but it's, it's just based on six columns. So, and, uh, so here, all, all you're doing is just sort of saying, instead of using this context, when you get here, use that context instead. So, you have, yeah, I guess that's where things could get messy. And not only, you'd see that more than likely. Um, but, but yeah, you, could, you need to make sure that you're, you're always sort of making sure you're doing that. Because uh, you, you, you could do it inside this room, you can do 406, and you can put like an image in there mm -hmm. as uh, 2 or 4, which would still work, but I guess you might have a lot of content to do 